And now for something completely different. Section 4.7 is called Newton's method. This is our one and only numerical technique from Calculus 1. When I hear numerical, I think tedious. And we're going to do a bunch of number crunching by hand. Um, and the plan is to introduce a, a numerical iterative technique, which can be used to find solutions of equations f of x equals zero. We will require that f is differentiable, as you'll see in the technique. Uh, so we're really looking for um, x-intercepts for functions or graphs of functions. This technique we'll introduce is called Newton's method. It's occasionally called the Newton-Raphson method. Uh, it's the only numerical technique we'll introduce in Calculus 1. In Calculus 2, you'll see something called numerical integration. Section 8.7 includes some of that. And this numerical stuff uh, is contained in our uh, cross-listed class numerical analysis, math 4257, 5257. Uh, and it likely starts with some Newton's method applications. Uh, in numerical integration, there'll be some sophisticated techniques of numerical integration in numerical analysis. What we're about to do is uh, not terribly sophisticated, yet it's, it's fairly powerful. So what we're gonna do is try to approximate, find an x value, that for a given function sets f of x equal to zero. We're gonna use tangent lines. So if we're gonna use tangent lines, then we're gonna to have to have f differentiable because we'll find the slopes of those tangent lines using f prime. We'll use tangent lines to improve our approximations as follows. First, we'll make an educated guess at what the solution is. Call this first estimation, this first approximation, this first guess, x sub zero. I say educated guess because the better your first guess is, the better the technique will work. If your first guess is really bad, the technique might still work. If your first guess is really bad, it might behave in an undesirable way. We'll elaborate on that a little bit later. So we'll make a first guess, then we'll find the line tangent to the graph of y equals f of x at the point corresponding to that first guess, the point x of zero, f of x of zero. That'll give us a tangent line to the curve. We'll follow that to its intersection with the x-axis. Where that tangent line intersects the x-axis will give us a new x-coordinate, uh, hopefully a better, approximation to a solution of the equation. We'll call that x sub one, and that's Newton's method, uh, one step at a time. So this new approximation, hopefully, is uh, better than the uh, previous approximation. Then we'll use the new approximation to find a newer approximation, x sub two, with the same technique of following tangent lines. Really, that technique is explained in this picture. So, Here's what we're looking for. We're looking for where this blue function y equals f of x intersects the x-axis. As we'll see, lots of uh, equations can be translated into equations of that form. So here's what we're looking for, where the intercept is. We'll make a guess. Let's suppose it ain't, <clears throat> ain't too good, so we got something to look at in the picture. So here's x sub zero, the first guess. We'll go up to the curve, nice smooth curve, differentiable has a derivative at that point, so we can find the equation of the tangent line. We've got a point, yeah, x sub zero, f of x sub zero. The function was given to you, the x sub zero, that's your guess, so you can find the coordinates of that point. You can find the derivative because you know the function, so you can find the slope. So you can find the equation of this line and see where it intersects the x-axis. And that'll be the refinement of your first guess, call it x sub one. Do it again to the curve, tangent line, to intercept, new approximation, better approximation. To the curve, follow the line, to the intercept, better yet, approximation, and so forth. 
So I would expect just to get uh, smaller versions of this same kind of process and have this sequence of points, sequences of real numbers is something you'll talk about in um, calculus too. But I'd expect that sequence of points to um, have a limit of uh, the desired root. I'd expect them to get <clears throat> closer and closer to the desired root. And in a well-behaved function, they will. Okay, so uh, what's the algebra behind this? Well, uh, let's crank through the arithmetic to determine what the new value is in terms of the previous value. Uh, the equation of the line tangent to y equals f of x at the point, say x sub n, f of x sub n, so we've done in iterations and produced approximation x sub n. Oh, well, let's use a point slope formula, as we often did for slopes of tangent lines and equations for tangent lines. We'd have y minus y1, well, the y coordinates is f of x sub n equals slope. Slope would be determined from the derivative x minus x sub n, or x minus x1, where the x coordinate of the point we're using is, is x sub n. So we get this as a relationship between x sub n, f of x sub n, and f prime of x sub n. It's just the equation of the tangent line. Uh, here it is right here in the picture. So the equation of that tangent line in terms of x sub n is this thing here. Really, it totally depends just on the x sub n, the y and the function. So we want to find the intercept of that line. Well, it's going to uh, intersect the x-axis is what we'll denote as x sub n plus 1 will be the x-coordinate. It's an x-intercept. The y-coordinate will be 0. So a point on this tangent line that we're looking for is, a, uh, is the point x sub n plus 1 comma 0. It's the x sub n plus 1 that is of interest. So we want to express x sub n plus 1, the new approximation, in terms of the stuff you already know, the function in the previous approximation. Well, we'll just plug those uh, x and y coordinates in for y and x in the formula for the line, and that gives us zero, uh, the y value minus f of x sub n equals f prime of x sub n times x sub n plus one, the x value of that point, replacing x with this, minus x sub n. We replace the x here with x sub n plus one, and the y here with zero. Uh, Let's see, we're looking for x sub n plus one. Let's divide both sides by f prime of x sub n. That'll leave us on one side with the difference x sub n plus one minus x sub n, this part here. The other side will have the negative f of x sub n divided by f prime of x sub n. Ruh -ruh. Better not divide by zero. So if we run across a place where the derivative is zero in this process, uh, we got a problem. Uh, we've got division by zero problem. Uh, and we'll explore the geometry of that as well. Uh, we were looking for x sub n, so all we have to do is take the negative x sub n to the other side. I'm sorry, we were looking for x sub n plus 1. And we get x sub n plus 1 in terms of x sub n and the function and its derivative as given here. So there's how you determine from the function in the previous approximation the next approximation using Newton's method. And exactly the same pictures we had above, except we've plugged x sub n in. We find the equation of the line. There it is, as we just said. You find its intercept. There's its x-intercept, x sub n plus 1, the new approximation. In terms of x sub n, f and f prime. So the steps for Newton's method are guess a first approximation to the solution of the equation f of x equals 0. Uh, you know, make a good guess. Uh, if you had a graph of the function, we'll see some examples where we have graphs of functions. And I can take a graph of a function and maybe not read off the actual coordinates of points in practice to um, five or six decimal places. Uh, so there's certainly reasons to want to do this, but I could use the graph of the function to give me an idea of where solutions to this equation are. So make an educated first guess. Use the first approximation to get a second approximation, the second to get a third, and so on, so forth, using um, this formula here. X sub n plus one is x sub n minus f of x sub n over f prime of x sub n. 
oh, as long as we don't get division by zero. If we got division by zero, we got it. We got a problem. It's unlikely you'll stumble across critical points uh, in this technique. Uh, but even getting close to them can be bad news. Okay, so let's illustrate that with some examples. Okay, uh, this is quite a reasonable example and illustrates why you might want to use this technique. It says use Newton's method to estimate the one real solution of x cubed plus 3x plus 1 equals 0. They tell you where to start. Start with a first guess of 0 and then find x of 2. All right, first off, can you do this algebraically? Can you factor this? I don't think you can. I can't. Uh, it's a cubic. If it was a uh, quadratic, if it was an x squared polynomial of degree two, um, no problem. I got the quadratic equation if the roots are ugly. But you have never seen, I'm guessing, um, like a quadratic equation for cubics. Turns out there is one. It's hideous, which is why you haven't seen it in high school. Stick with the math, you'll see it in a modern algebra class, in a senior level class. Uh, it's not practical. Um, so what this boils down to is you, uh, none of us know how to solve this algebraically, uh, how to factor it and so forth. Um, you might have some ideas on what rational roots are from some of your pre-calculus experience, uh, and you could try those. I don't think they'll work, but uh, I mean, there are a variety of techniques to attempt, uh, but I, I don't know how to solve this exactly. So, I mean, and that's just a simple little cubic, x cubed plus 3x plus 1 equals 0. I can't solve that. Right. I challenge um, most folks to solve that. There are formulas that will do it, and they're horrible. Give me access to those formulas, and I'll find you a precise value, and you're not going to like it. I ain't going to like it either. So we need a way to do this uh, and find the solution to this and um, other, even polynomial equations. Hey, if it's a cubic, at least there's a formula. If it were a fourth degree polynomial, there's a formula. If it's a fifth degree polynomial, there ain't even a formula. So fifth and higher degrees don't even have um, like quadratic formulas for fifth degree polynomials. Not such a thing. Something else you would prove in an algebra class, a senior level algebra class. So we're stuck if we can't do some approximations. All right, well, uh, let's set f of x equal to uh, the, the left-hand side, x cubed plus 3x plus 1. Now, Newton's method applies to finding solutions to f of x equals 0. I may be asked questions that don't come immediately in that form, so I have to keep that in mind. I got to deal with f of x equals 0. Here, piece of cake, f of x is the function on the left. And Newton's method will allow us to uh, find approximate solutions of that. We'll start at zero because they told us to. Okay, uh, we'll need the derivative. The derivative is, uh, no problem, 3x squared plus 3, differentiating the f of x function here. And uh, the text does this thing by making tables of values, so uh, let's follow their lead. Okay, so we need um, We'll start with x of zero. We'll find an x of one. From this, we'll produce an x of two. So that's in the table on this line. I don't have to go to the next line, as we'll see. Uh, here's the uh, x of n values for these, these inputs. So when n is zero, x of zero is zero. Yeah, we started with zero. We need f of x of n. We need to plug that number into the function. Okay, so we'll plug the zero into the function. Looks like it produces one. We need to plug that zero into the derivative. Uh, here's the derivative, produces three. And this was a little formula we had. So we'll find x sub one in terms of x sub zero by taking x sub zero, zero, and subtracting f of x sub n, that's one, that's why we made the table, and divided by uh, f prime of x sub n divided by three. So we get zero minus one divided by three, negative one third. Um, so our first approximation was zero. Newton's method produces a next approximation of negative one third. Do it again. Plug the negative one third into the function. 
Okay, same process. Let me not trace through all these details. We get out negative one over 27, plug negative one third into the derivative, produces 10 thirds, do the same process. This time we're taking the negative one third, the x1 value, and producing an x sub two, the same way as before. Take what's in the second column, divide it by what's in the third column, and subtract it from this. Did I stay my, stay my columns? I think it was off by a column. Take this divided by that and subtract the result from this. So that gives us uh, negative 29 over 90. Uh, that would be, if we made another line, we'd set n equal to two, we'd put negative 29 over 90 here, and off we'd go to find the next one. But they just wanted us to find x sub two. We get x sub two equals negative 29 over 90. And look what happened. Our first guess was zero. Newton's method produced the big jump all the way from zero to negative one third. Newton's method applied to negative one third for this function jumped just a little bitty bit, jumped to negative 29 over 90. Negative one third, that's 30 over 90, negative 30 over 90. So this only changed from negative 30 over 90 to negative 29 over 90 in Newton's technique, Newton's method here. So it only changed by one 90th. So that's it's not much. Um, I bet if I did it again, it'd change by even less. And that's what happens with Newton's method. If you're close to a root, it can do some crazy things if you're not careful. But uh, yeah, it just changed by a little bit. Well, we must be close to a root. We could plug negative 29 over 90 into that function and see what we get. It's probably fairly close to zero. Uh, we could also revise it some more by iterating the process, do it again and again. But there's an illustration of Newton's method, very straightforward, granted, and it's tedious to do the arithmetic. At least I could get exact values in this one. Uh, here they give us a trig function. We have to measure angles and radians because this is calculus. Um, and I have to do some decimal approximations on this one. Their little story is to calculate a planet's space coordinates, we have to solve equations like x equals 1 plus 0 0.5 sine x. Graphing the function f of x equals x minus 1 minus 0 0.5 sine x suggests that the function has a root near 1.5. Okay, so they looked at the graph to get some insight. This is their educated guess. The instructions are use one application of Newton's method to improve this estimate. That is, start with x sub zero equals 1.5, find x sub one. They tell you to uh, five decimal places, this is the actual answer. Uh, yeah, that's close to 1.5. So let's see what one iteration of Newton's method does to 1.5. First, we need a function. They actually gave us the function here. Uh, setting this function equal to zero is equivalent to solving this equation. When the function is zero, then x equals this plus that, which is exactly what we're looking for. So there's where the equation we were looking for, looking to solve, wasn't of the form function set equal to zero. So we had to introduce a function that corresponded to uh, this equation. When we set this function equal to zero, that's equivalent to solving this equation. So we had to translate it a little bit. So we'll take that to be f of x. Um, setting it equal to zero gives us uh, the equation we really wanted to solve, so that's the thing to do. We'll need the function and its derivative. So differentiate, derivative of x is one, derivative of sine is cosine, and that produces this for f prime of x. We're gonna start with x sub zero equals 1.5, we'll need f of x sub zero, we'll need f prime of x sub zero, so let's not make a table, it'll only have one row in it. With x sub zero equals 1.5, we have f of x sub zero, f of 1.5, plug back into the original function, be 1.5 minus one minus 0 0.5 sine of 1.5. Remember, this is 1.5 radians, not degrees, if you're looking for something more intuitive. Uh, but if you do this on a calculator, which you certainly will, um, make sure it's set in radians mode. So you have to do the trig functions in radians. So we'll plug 1.5 into the function. 
uh, it'll give us out 1.5 minus 1 gives us a 0 0.5 and this other stuff here we'll uh, approximate that here in a second let's keep it precise as long as we can we need f prime of x of 0 that's f prime of 1.5 so we'll plug 1.5 into uh, f prime there it is will be 1 minus 0 0.5 times cosine of 1.5 whatever that is it's what it is so uh, in precise values, I'm just stuck with these transcendental functions with a 1.5 in them. So x1 would be the previous x of 0 minus f of the previous divided by f prime of the previous. So this is what we get. We know all these things. x0 was 1.5. f of x of 0, we computed right here, uh, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 sine 1.5. Here's f prime of x sub zero. That's in the denominator, and that's the exact answer. Of course, that's not very uh, useful. So let me get a calculator and ask it what this is to several decimal places, and we get something along these lines. Okay, uh, our first guess was 1.5, and this dropped a little bit. Not much. Uh, how much did it drop by? Uh, from 1.5, it dropped by a 0 0.001, even a little less than that. Um, is that right? Uh, 0 0.0013 or 4, uh, not much. Uh, dropped by what? Tens, uh, one, one and a half thousandths or something to that effect. It didn't drop much. We could iterate this and get closer. How do we do to their, their value up here? Um, they told us the five decimal places. Let's see if we got five decimal places. That'd be pretty amazing because this was an easy technique and we only dealt with it once. So comparing what we got, next slide, comparing what we got to what they say the exact value, well, what the value is to five decimal places. It deals with transcendental functions. Nobody knows the exact value in a sense. How'd we do? Uh, we got the one. We got the four nine. Uh, we got the eight. Yeah, we got the eight. How about the seven? That's where it differs. So uh, in the uh, fourth decimal place, well, I don't know. I guess we got that one too. In the fourth decimal place, the six. Yeah, what we do to this is kind of thing you'd address in numerical analysis. It's peripheral to us. But if I were to say, do they, agree, do they agree to four decimal places? I'd round both of them to four decimal places and see if they're the same. Four decimal places, uh, this, you just drop the zero and we get that last digit to seven. This one, one, two, three, four, we'd round that one as needed. Uh, this is greater than a half, so we'd round this one up to seven. We're correct to four decimal places. How about that? Five decimal places? Uh, no. No, they don't agree to five decimal places. Uh, I round up and down as appropriate, which apparently they've done here. Uh, this one to five decimal places, uh, we'd have that five there would be the last digit. So it, ours would end with a six five to five decimal places, and this is theirs. So they, we don't agree to five decimal places, but we do agree to four decimal places. Not bad considering how elementary this technique is. Um, <clears throat> This worked pretty well because the initial guess was so close to uh, the solution. So we guessed 1.5 and the actual solution to five decimal places was, uh, well, it was pretty close to 1.5. So that's the reason we got such good results is because our educated guess was a pretty good one. Back to the notes. All right, um, things can go wrong with Newton's method this to be explored uh, in more detail in a numerical analysis class. This is a little background to inspire these things in numerical analysis. Uh, and it's appropriate to do something numerical in a calculus class. Uh, Newton's method's not guaranteed to produce a solution to f of x equals zero. For one thing, it might not be a solution. So before looking for a solution, make sure one exists. Uh, and, and we know sometimes how to check for functions having zeros. If the function's continuous and it's positive here and negative there, well, it's zero somewhere in between. That's the intermediate value theorem. 
So before looking for zeros, make sure you know they're out there. Uh, with any numerical t technique, before trying to solve the thing, make sure you know it has a solution. I mean, knowing it has a solution and knowing what the solution is, those are really different questions. Uh, even when a solution does exist, stuff can go wrong. Uh, the method can get stuck. What we've got in this picture here is a situation where Newton's method produces x sub 1 from x sub 0 and produces x sub 0 from x sub 1. I plug in x sub zero, I go get a tangent line, follow it, it gives this intercept. Let's do it again. Go to the curve, get a tangent line, find its intercept. Oh, it goes right back where you started. So it gets stuck in this infinite loop of bouncing between x zero and x one. So there's one thing that can go wrong and that would have to be a curve of a very subtle shape. Uh, there's an example though, uh, even in, uh, in the exercises, uh, number 13. And the exercises uh, gives an example of a function that will oscillate between two values. Uh, could, are, are you doomed with Newton's method? No, you need to pick something uh, a little bit closer to that desired root. X sub zero and X sub one, they're too far away. If you go closer, I think you'll be in good shape. Uh, another concern, and we'll illustrate this with some examples, is I may have in mind, for some physical reason, one solution to the system, to the equation f of x equals zero, and Newton's method gives me something totally different. I may have uh, been looking for a positive x value, maybe it measured some quantity, and Newton's method ends up giving me something negative out. Well, if Newton's method told you it's a zero, it's a zero, uh, it, but it isn't the one you wanted. Well, that's the problem with Newton's method. It isn't that sophisticated, uh, yet surprisingly productive. So uh, what could happen is really <clears throat> we got a bad first guess. Uh, here is a situation for a curve. Here's the root we're looking for, the one we had in mind. We fed it in an initial value and Newton's method ends up taking us here towards this root. Yeah, that's because you're so far away from this, the root you sought. You're closer to one you weren't looking for. Whatever inspires you to seek one root over the other. Uh, but there's one thing that can cause problems. Yeah, your first guess, it wasn't very good. Um, it gave you a solution, but it wasn't the one you were looking for. Well, you should have guessed closer. You needed more information about what we have over here to give it an initial seed that gives a appropriate output. Um, here's another situation where that occurs. Uh, we were seeking this root and started here. It looks like it's reasonably close. We went up to the curve, followed the tangent line, took us over here, go up to the curve, follow the tangent line, takes us here. Tangent line, it's, it's zeroing in on this intercept. This looks like a sine wave, say. We wanted this root. We ended up getting this one over here. Uh, yeah, bad first choice. It wasn't close enough to the root. Uh, what happened is that it's messed you up is, hey, you see uh, right here, there's a horizontal tangent line to this function. You got, you got too close to that. When you get close to these horizontal tangent lines, these lines are gonna make the next guess be really far away. You hit a place where the derivative is zero and the, the technique's gonna blow up as it describes here. Uh, if we happen to hit upon a point where f prime of x sub n equals zero, you'll get division by zero and the technique blows up. Even when you get close to a point like that, it can do some bad things as illustrated here. It could take you to um, uh, a route you didn't expect to find for one thing. So it's not a flawless technique. Uh, if it behaves with this thing in terms of um, bouncing around or um, if you get close to, or if you get to 
a critical point, then you're going to get division by zero, uh, depending on how well the software is written. It's either going to crash or tell you you got division by zero. Uh, but think of this as a technique blowing up. Um, if you have a good initial first guess and the function's not too crazy, then Newton's method is a productive little numerical technique. Let's illustrate.